Hello and welcome to another episode of Forkful of Noodles. I'm Krish Mohan. So before we dive into this week's episode, I just want to let you guys know that if you would like to support the show, DIY Socially Conscious Comedy, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash krishmohanhaha and become a monthly patron for only $2 a month. All right, let's dive right into this week's episode. There is something in literature called the panopticon. English philosopher Jeremy Bentham describes it as an obelisk that can see everything and everyone at all times. But the people around the obelisk don't know whether there's anyone in there to watch. So better decide on the fact that they are. Where for the first time, institutions have become so large and centralized that they were no longer able to monitor and therefore control each one of their individual members. And the solution that he devised was an architectural design originally intended to be implemented in prisons that he called the panopticon. The primary attribute of which was the construction of an enormous tower in the center of the institution, where whoever controlled the institution could at any moment watch any of the inmates, although they couldn't watch all of them at all times. And crucial to this design was that the inmates could not actually see into the panopticon, into the tower, and so they never knew if they were being watched or even when. And what made him so excited about this discovery was that that would mean that the prisoners would have to assume that they were being watched at any given moment, which would be the ultimate enforcer for obedience and compliance. It's basically Santa Claus. Okay, I am pretty sure Santa was an NSA agent with OCD, spying on kids and their parents, making lists and checking it constantly. I know it says that he checked it twice, but but I'm pretty sure he's always checking like a maniac. Okay, and then when the economy turned in 2008, the NSA had to make hard cuts and they let Santa go like he has let himself go for so long now. But it's fine. The NSA found camera phones. Hey, remember how everyone just laughed at the idea of camera phones? I mean, the photos were just so crappy and junky, you know, and then all of a sudden, cell phone photography just shot through the roof in quality and became like professional grade, right? Most phones are now purchased based on how many megapixels the camera on the phone has. And I bet the average consumer doesn't even know what a megapixel is. Yeah, yeah, I do. It's like a, a regular pixel, but like way bigger. You might also remember that Edward Snowden warned us about the NSA and how they were collecting our phone data, right? Using apps and call logs, cameras. They basically made our consumer goods into the panopticon and we were none the wiser. And now we're all on our best behavior because the NSA could be listening. And if we were bad and dissent against the unauthorized spying, then we don't get Christmas this year. Okay, and they will wait a literal war on Christmas instead of a bullshit fake ideological one. Our privacy is bought and sold like this country is a huge pawn shop of data. And because of the idea of the panopticon, we don't really have moments of privacy. Without private moments, we can't really discover who we really are. You know, human beings are social creatures, but we need to interact with each other. But in those private moments, we get to self-reflect, recharge, and grow. Eric Schmidt of Google makes the claim that the only people that want privacy are those that have something to hide. And Mark Zuckerberg claims that privacy is no longer the norm. In a 2009 interview with the longtime CEO of Google, Eric Schmidt, who, when asked about all the different ways his company is causing invasions of privacy for hundreds of millions of people around the world, said this. He said, if you're doing something that you don't want other people to know, maybe you shouldn't be doing it in the first place. Now, there's all kinds of things to say about that mentality. Okay, so if we've got nothing to hide, then it should be fine 
for anybody to stand on the street corner and just jack off all day. Hey, why? I mean, why would a guy or a gal be afraid to to hide their junk if there's nothing to hide? If we don't need private spaces to masturbate, our streets should be running wild with spunk. And what about surprise birthday parties? Does Eric Schmidt and Zuckerberg think that surprise parties are plots against them? I mean, if that's the case, then I don't think you're mentally well enough to run a giant tech company. Okay, you just hand it over to us and we the people will take care of the company for you while you go take care of what you need. Oh, oh wait, you, you don't. You don't believe in that. So we'll watch you take care of you taking care of yourself. The counter argument to all of this lack of privacy is that this should force the government to be less private about its dealings. They should be more open. And some can say that's exactly what the Trump administration is. Trump's administration is basically the boldness of the government because of our lackluster response to the issue of privacy. With Trump spewing rhetoric like shithole countries, it's very clear that they're anti-immigration. And the whole Stormy Daniels story reveals how anti-family they are. Scott Pruitt, a man that has sued the EPA, is now running the EPA proves how anti-climate they are. And with the surge of data mining, it proves that they are trying to keep us dumb, scared, and buying shit. They're not doing this behind closed doors. It's all out in the open, and it's acted on very quickly. As Glenn Greenwald states, being watched all the time means you follow the mandate of social orthodoxy. Now, there's a reason why privacy is so craved universally and instinctively. It isn't just a reflexive movement like breathing air or drinking water. The reason is, is that when we're in a state where we can be monitored, where we can be watched, our behavior changes dramatically. The range of behavioral options that we consider when we think we're being watched severely reduce. This is just a fact of human nature that has been recognized in social science and in literature and in religion and in virtually every field of discipline. There are dozens of psychological studies that prove that when somebody knows that they might be watched, the behavior they engage in is vastly more conformist and compliant. Human shame is a very powerful motivator, as is the desire to avoid it. And that's the reason why people, when they're in a state of being watched, make decisions not that are the byproduct of their own agency, but that are about the expectations that others have of them or the mandates of societal orthodoxy. This loss of privacy is the start of totalitarianism. It's the eradication of freedom. This mass surveillance state creates a prison of the mind. Which means that they're trying to make money for the prison industrial complex with our brains. I mean, this is extra super villainy shit. Okay, no, James Bond has never faced this sort of super villainy before. And even our mind isn't a place where you can have your own private thoughts because God might be watching. God is like the OG NSA. And yes, God has watched you sleep, eat, shower, make love, masturbate, cry, and basically everything you've done. God, God might need some help, okay, or, or like a, a hobby. Okay, go make another universe, God, okay, just let us be for a while. At this point, we've submitted to the panopticon of technology. We submitted to it when we called Edward Snowden a traitor instead of a hero. When Cambridge Analytica was able to use our own fears against us and open the doors to other companies doing the same thing. When Google, Facebook, and Apple are all selling our information to the highest bidder for more control. And when Congress cuddled with these tech giants instead of imposing restrictions. And when we let law enforcement into the digital landscape of our lives. We've been sitting on this matter for far too long. The renowned socialist activist Rosa Luxemburg once said, he who does not move 
does not notice his chains. Our chains are beginning to rust, and we don't have to be silent or still on this issue anymore. With all that's happened, we should be ready to take back the internet, something Edward Snowden said was a tool for democratization. And since our privacy has been taken away, let's say fuck all to the social orthodoxy and very loudly and publicly say we want our privacy back. And we have the right to think for ourselves and have a moment of peace by giving this administration, the NSA, and all the power-hungry megalomaniacs none of it. That's been your fork full of noodles for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, give it a thumbs up uh, on Facebook or YouTube. Uh, and give it a share. Uh, sharing is a great way to help this show. It reaches uh, new audiences that way. Uh, and uh, you get to share it with some friends. You get to share it with some enemies. Anybody that you feel like would enjoy uh, content like this or benefit from, from a, a video like this. And uh, a great way, another great way to really help the show is by becoming a patron. Uh, you can go to patreon.com slash haha where you can find all the details about what you're supporting uh, about this show. Uh, I am the only employee of this show, and it takes a very long time to make an episode. Uh, from doing all the research, all the writing, all the editing, uh, all the video filming, it's, uh, it's a multi-person job done by one person. So if you, can, if you can and are able to financially contribute to that, that's awesome. Uh, it all starts at only $2 a month. Go to patreon.com slash Mohan haha. I have live stand-up comedy shows coming up in Los Angeles, California. I'm doing a bunch of shows in Los Angeles. Finally hitting, hitting Los Angeles up. Uh, I'm going to be in San Francisco, California, Portland, Oregon, Salt Lake City, Utah, Denver, Colorado, uh, and we're, we're heading all over the place. I'm on a cross-country tour with musician List Victory. We're doing our music and comedy shows, bringing politics and art all across the country. Uh, we're super excited about it. If you want to follow us, you can follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Check out the details in the description below, and you can check out our full tour schedule on my website at Ramen Noodles Comedy. Dot com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.com. While you're there, uh, you can check out all of my stand-up comedy albums along with my tour dates. Uh, you can download them uh, via any of your favorite music download and streaming services. It's available on iTunes, Pandora, Spotify, Google Play. But the best place, I think, to download uh, DIY artists is is on Bandcamp, uh, and you can check out all my albums on my Bandcamp at ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. That's R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. Uh, you, and you can subscribe to my Bandcamp, and when you do, you get exclusive stand-up comedy and storytelling material each and every month for only $5 a month. Uh, which is not that expensive, and it helps the show, and you get a bunch of cool fucking stand-up content. That's awesome. So you can go to ramennoodlescomedy.bandcamp.com, R-A-M-A-N, noodlescomedy.bandcamp.com. Uh, and like I said, a really great way to help this show is by becoming a monthly patron by going to patreon.com slash haha starting at only two dollars a month that is one cup of coffee guys if you can give up one cup of coffee you can help support this show uh go to patreon.com slash haha you get to see uh how and why you should support this show you get to build a community and talk directly to me without any sort of censorship by any other social media platform um, and, uh, you get to help, help me get to, to more cities, my favorite cities and your favorite cities more often. Uh, so go to patreon.com slash Uh, I'm also on steam it. I'm also on minds. Uh, I'm all over the goddamn place. There's a lot of shit you can follow me on. <laughs> uh, but I truly, truly, truly appreciate you guys, 
uh, liking this stuff, watching this stuff, sharing this stuff. Keep doing that. Tell more people about it uh, because that's how you help independent media grow. Uh, if you can't contribute monthly, there's also an option for a one-time donation. Check out the description and the video below. Uh, and, uh, and I hope to see you guys at a live show. It's always fun to, to meet you guys out on the road. Uh, well, I'm super excited to come all over the country and see you guys. So uh, that's, uh, that's your forkful of noodles for this week. Thank you so much for getting into it, and we'll see you on the road.